My first recollection of exposure to people with disabilities was probably watching the retarded kids, or I guess you'd want me to say disabled kids get off the short bus when I was in elementary school. They were the kids that you would avoid because they were just so different from us normal kids. Well, my coworker uses a wheelchair. I'm so inspired by her ability and drive to wake up every day and come to work. I don't know how she does it, but I'm so proud of her. I hate to say this, but people with disabilities are just scamming the system. At my daughter's school, there's a classroom for the kids with disabilities. I bet their parents wish that they were in a regular class with the normal kids. Sometimes I question whether or not handicapped people need so many parking spaces in front of the stores. Half of these people with handicap stickers don't even look handicapped to me. Actually, most of them look like they could use some exercise. I love the recent TV show with the actor with cerebral palsy. I think it's so nice that the producers included him in this role. More TV shows and movies should tell stories about people with disabilities. I have to be honest. If I was in an accident and paralyzed like that guy in the movie, Me Before You, I'd probably want to kill myself too. Who wants to live their life as a crippled person? It's just not a life worth living. I feel so bad for the woman at my church who uses a walker. I make sure to pray for her healing every day. <laughs> I could never live without my legs. That's no way to live. Honestly, I'd rather not live at all. Athletes with disabilities are defying the odds. If they can do it, so can I. They motivate me to push myself. Don't even get me started on these kids with ADHD. They just need to calm down and their parents need to parent them better. They're out of control. I understand that crimes are tied to people with mental illness, but not everyone with a mental illness is dangerous. I feel so bad for people with anxiety and depression. People with mental issues are just dangerous. You don't know what they're gonna do next. People who stigmatize people with disabilities are so crazy. So what are you thinking about Steve and Julia's comments? I think most would agree that Steve's comments were very harsh and obviously stigmatizing against people with disabilities. But what about Julia? Her comments seemed fairly positive. We have found that most people use statements similar to Julia's frequently, and with good intentions. But they fail to realize that they too are contributing to stigma. We can't end stigma unless we start talking about it. Stigma is um, an unfortunate quality of uh, modern social life that anybody who has ever had to overcome some form of stigma um, is unfortunately also innately aware of. It's, it pervades um, everything that you do, perhaps, because you know that you are, in essence, starting the race a few laps behind. It's an unfortunate quality of our current community infrastructure that, it seems, segregation is built in. It's intrinsic. It looks like curbs and sidewalks and stairs. On one level, the stigma means that you can't get a job, you can't get transportation, you can't get access to uh, watch your kid play basketball. On another level, I think it impacts all of our culture and all of our society because uh, it, it stops us considering diversity in general. I went for an interview at a social service agency they said, come on by, you sound like a good candidate, that's great. So my partner drops me off and I'm in my wheelchair and I get there and there's steps. And so the director comes out on the steps and says to me, well, this isn't gonna work. Why didn't you tell me you had this problem? You're not gonna be able to, to intern here. But the thing is, even people with disabilities get caught up in that and feel like they have to make accommodations in order to fit into the world as it is, as opposed to advocating for their access and their right to have a job, get into a building, and those kinds of things. Clearly, stigma is a barrier. It's a barrier in terms of um, social, occupational, um, economic indicators 
folks with disabilities, um, you know, most often do not have the ability to have the full earning potential that non-disabled people do. Their, their social circle is smaller, or their social circle is either only with family or other paid caregivers. It's not just that, that inclusion is important on the grounds of it being a standard and, a, and an ideal. It's, it's important on the grounds that it has that the opposite of in inclusion, exclusion, and segregation has true physical negative implications, not just on the folks who are first and directly impacted by it, but by the, by the folks within that dominant group as well. And I think that inclusivity uh, not only helps the person that we're, we are including, but it, but it helps us uh, because it helps us to see the full range of humanity. And I think any time we cut off a, a group of people because of disability or because they're different in some kind of way, uh, what it really means is that we're cutting off um, the potential for our, our, our community, the potential for our, our society. Um, there's, there's very little that society looks at a person with a significant physical disability and says they can do that. Everything is framed in what our limitations are, what we can't do. And there's real data to show that, that people, um, marginalized groups, specifically folks with disabilities, are affected deeply by the culture and the systems at, at play, be it health disparagement, housing disparagement, employment, or transportation. Abs we have plenty of work to do and we're not there yet. Now, I, I was fortunate to have a grandmother who worked in the Bradford area school system with children with disabilities. At that time, those children were seg segregated. But I used to go to that classroom and help my grandmother grade papers and stuff when I was little. And that gave me the opportunity to see people, my peers with disabilities, as being very much like me. And many people, because of the long history of segregation of people with disabilities of all kinds, have not had the opportunity to see people as people, and we need to do more of that. We miss out on the valuable contributions and input of people who are, you know, f contributing members of society. If if we don't embrace, um, you know, all citizens. We, we have a very skewed perspective in terms of what, what society is about. Are people with disabilities broken? Should we focus more on changing them to fit society? Or should we change society to fit people with disabilities? Impairment and medical um, disability and injury and disease, that is one thing. And that can affect an individual, of course. There's no doubt about that. But that individual must still live within a system. And that system might be structured in such a way as to oppress that person. It might be structured in such a way as to, to introduce lots of barriers to that person. The first problem with uh, stigma is that it leads to people being discriminated against. If I walk into a restaurant and the bathroom has narrow doors, I always think, well, how are people with in wheelchairs going to get in? Partly because I had a family member who was in a wheelchair and I had to deal with getting them through narrow doors or getting them in places that were not really designed for, for wheelchairs. Is this environment that we've created one in which everyone can have access, that everyone can be a full participant? To me, that's what a, a perfect world would be. When I go to a place, I get what I want and I get what I need. And buildings are built for me. And um, doctors uh, understand how to treat my body. And, and so then I become an architect and then I build a building. And I think, oh, I have to help people who have disabilities and I do it from my perspective. It's not intentional, it just is, everything's based on an able perspective, which is ableism, that's all. The fundamental assumption is, is that a person with disability is a burden, is incapable, uh, you know, can't participate, uh, is expensive for society. There's nothing inherently wrong with the model of medicine. It becomes 
horribly wrong when it's the only model we use, when everything is about what's the deficiency, how do I fix you? There's a place for both, for, for medical interventions and social interventions, but for most of us as social beings, it's in the social realm that we make a difference. Chris is in 11th grade and um, pretty much on his own in high school. He has a mentor that helps him. No biting, Chris. All right, Chrissy, go to mom. As far as Christopher's concerned, unfortunately, especially years ago, um, a lot of poking fun at. Uh, I had a dentist refuse to see him, so I'm not working with him. Um, people asking us to leave restaurants because he made some noise, you know. It was hard to take him places and, and people didn't understand, people didn't know. So now tell me, is their disability their medical impairment? Or is their disability the inability to access everything else that is in that system that they are forced to live within? I'd say that disability is much more on the social side. Is there a way to create a solution to that major barrier without directly attacking that major barrier? Perhaps there is, and perhaps it's through the willful education of our children and the indoctrination, really, of our children within a society that is integrative instead of separated. Imagine a playground that is truly integrative and inclusive. And imagine those children growing to be adolescents. And imagine those children going into design classes and business classes. Do you think that they're not going to approach these large infrastructure and societal problems from a different perspective? Of course they will. Does the meaning, connotation, and historical significance behind the words we choose have a negative impact on people with disabilities? Language uh, constrains how we think. Uh, language uh, perpetuates things that may be inaccurate. And I think using language that is more reflective of reality is, um, uh, is much better for, for everyone involved. You know, we use the word handicap. We use the R word. You know, uh, we taught it. There's nothing positive about those words. Those are outdated, uh, archaic words that have a history to it. People asking the weirdest, you know, like I said, is he, is he crazy? I remember a woman asking me, you know, what's wrong with him? I said, nothing. I mean, I said, look at the hat you're wearing. You call a person crippled or invalid or, or a gimp, and words really matters. Language matters. And even in, in school, you know, they say uh, words don't, don't hurt me, you know. Uh, um, but words can hurt you. And, and we know that when you're a young person, even a mole on your, a pimple on your forehead becomes a big thing. Can you imagine uh, a kid with an obvious uh, 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 deformity? Can you imagine uh, the kind of um, bullying that goes on in the picking? on an individual and, 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 and how obvious that is and how that just, you know, um, impact uh, uh, the, the positive images uh, uh, someone is trying to make. It's a devastating thing for a young person. Even, you know, adults have a problem with that. But if people are, are looking at someone acting differently and they say, oh, he must be insane, then that tells everybody around them they should stay away from that person. People still use, they say, retard, which somehow hits, it hits you, you know. I hate when people use it like, he's a retard, you know, things like that. Or when kids will say, that's gay. You know, it's that same type of connotation. I must admit, uh, when the R word campaign came around, um, it's almost inevitable that whatever we replace it with is going to become an insult in the next 10 years. And so people are going to, go on playgrounds and see you're an intellectually disabled. Um, it, it, it's important, but it really just belies the underlying attitude that, that someone is different and worthless, and, and that's more important to tackle than the words themselves, in my opinion. If you're constantly hearing yourself referred to in a negative term, it, you eventually start to believe that negativity. 
and it starts to lower your expectations of yourself. The step that we have tried to take is just to change the language. And I don't think just changing the language works. I think you first have to portray people with disabilities in a more positive light. Like people have tried to take blind and replace it with unsighted or sightless. Sightless, definitely, it makes me feel less. It's like saying you're less. You have no sight, so you're less. And I think those things just focus even more on what I can't do than on what I can do. So what are you going to do? Are you going to speak empowering words or are you going to speak negative words into a people life? Are our perceptions of people with disabilities based on truthfulness? Or are they a product of our experiences? Our, our culture is influenced by um, who raised us, you know, who are our parents, where did we come from, who are our friends in school. I think people do absolutely make decisions on what they believe on gut feelings rather than on getting to know a person. People still view differences as weaknesses and oddities and still take advantage of people. So uh, we have an innate fear of people who are different. Uh, part of it is fear that I might get what you have. Uh, part of it is fear that uh, you might hurt me. Um, so, and, and that comes out of ignorance uh, to a large degree. A lot of people are afraid of my son. They think he's going to be terribly violent because um, he does lash out and sometimes his movements are a little scary. Um, like I said, they don't think he has feelings. They don't think they can be friends with him. They'll always misjudge his actions and misjudge the level of, of intelligence and, and love that that this guy has. So I, I, I think not knowing, you know, what, what's in that head and what he's capable of is, is people lose out. Well, the media has done an awful lot to promote the misconception that people with mental illness are violent. And that is not at all true. There are no facts to prove that. The people with serious mental illness are a small piece of the overall population that has mental illness. And it's even even smaller proportion of them that ever commits a violent act. In fact, usually people with mental illness are victimized. That happens much more frequently. Uh, I know adults with autism who have been financially bullied on the computer, where they've taken their money. They've been set up to commit crimes. It's quite unusual with mental illness that people have violence. And actually the data shows that um, folks with mental illness have a lower propensity towards violence as compared to what we see in the media. It's unreasonable to believe that people can be ill from the neck down, but not from the head up. We have one body. Uh, and the reality is that some people have various problems and challenges that make their brain functioning different. Telling someone to snap out of an illness, it just isn't right. If I said to you, you're diabetic and you're taking insulin, you just need to eat right and you'll be, all, you'll be okay. You know, it's the same kind of approach. It's, it's not, again, there's no facts behind those statements. Because we're built to simplify the world around us, um, we tend to take shortcuts. That really sets us up then for stereotypes. I watched this uh, lady um, in, in her uh, early 30s um, come out with her, uh, uh, her, her daughter. And the, I then saw the, the lady give the daughter something. I, I wasn't sure what it was. Uh, and uh, the little girl thought skipping towards me, running towards me. And as she got closer, 
I saw that she had a dollar in her hand. And um, I, I, she came up to me and tried to give it to me. And I said, no, no, that's OK. Uh, 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 take it back to your mom. And I share that because that uh, relates to uh, the pity. What are, you, what are you telling the child? What are you telling the young person? What is the message that it, 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 that person is getting? People with disabilities, all types of disabilities are stigmatized and looked upon as people who are needing help, needing charity, and needing to be supported by uh, giving. You default to what you believe to be true about people uh, and because that's your own experience. You don't have any real experience. You don't interact with me. You don't know me. You don't see me. And so often people in authority have misinformation or things they believe to be true about a population. And if, if you start off with the wrong information, how can you produce anything that's going to be positive in regard to change? No hard evidence, no factual information. They just believe stuff to be true. Legislators are people too. They're part of the larger society, and I expect that they carry with them the same expectations, attitudes, and stigmas that the rest of society does. Uh, so they form policies that either are, are bad for people with disabilities, or they do nothing to include people with disabilities. Most people with a mental illness can and do recover, and statements that say, well, they're just scamming the system, I don't think that the individuals who say that know any of the facts behind what they're saying. You know, you look in your magazines and your movies and your you know, your fashion catalogs and things like that, and it's always the beautiful people. Uh, everything has to be beautiful and perfect. And so someone with a disability is seen as not beautiful, not perfect. That doesn't fit our society's image of what we wanna be. If I apply for a job and that job interviewer sees me come in and sees me come in with my guide dog and if they have a preconceived stigma about a blind person what a blind person can do it absolutely is going to affect my ability to get that job it can block someone with a disability from being able to live and work as an equal member of society because that landlord might not let me have that apartment because he or she is afraid that I'm going to burn the building down. The biggest misconception about people with disabilities is that having a disability makes a person incapable of making a real contribution to their family, their community, their society, and their workplace. But I was um, in a position where I was giving a day-long presentation to um, seven different classrooms full of students, and I'd worked with the teachers who were coordinating this presentation for months, but they'd never met me in person. And I get there at seven o'clock in the morning, a school's opening, and they happen to see me with all my paraphernalia, and oh my goodness, oh my goodness, we don't need you to present all day. We'll just, we'll just point at you and we want you to say yes or no to a question. And I said, what changed between three o'clock yesterday when we got off the phone and this morning? Well, 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 we didn't realize how, how difficult it was going to be for you. And I said, talking isn't difficult. And it took me a few minutes before I realized it was that they were uncomfortable with watching something they perceived as a struggle because I don't breathe in quite the same rhythm everyone else does, because my body moves a little bit differently when I speak. And I think people need to do some soul searching and see if they carry a stigma that may be hurting someone else. There's an assumption too that anybody that has a disability is suffering that, and, and, and that's just not so. <clears throat> I am a happy, fulfilled, involved, engaged and uh, in every aspect of the word person and I fight like hell to stay alive and, and, and have a full life and so 
the, the stereotype that everybody that's in a wheelchair or anybody that has a disability is suffering is it's just not true. Part of the lived experience includes disability. To think that you are either abled or disabled at its heart is a misunderstanding. If you are not currently identifying yourself as disabled, in all honesty, you simply aren't identifying yourself disabled right now. Have you ever heard of the term inspirational porn? Should we be inspired by the everyday activities of people with disabilities? Basically what it is, it's objectifying people with disabilities for the purpose of furthering a cause that has nothing to do with them. So if an everyday task is inspiring, it's about the task, not the person. The part that makes it inspirational is disability is a metaphor for can't do, for incompetent, for uh, always in need of uh, support, for not being able to think. For me it's exploiting individuals with disability for the sake of getting a word out or a message. And so for me, as a person with a disability, it's, it's insulting and devaluing. There's nothing that wrong with inspiration. I mean, we see our favorite athletes, our favorite artists, and we're inspired by them to engage in our own artistic or sporting endeavors. I think where it becomes a problem is when people say, oh, it's not that I'm inspired that you climb Mount Everest, but I'm inspired that you got up in the morning and brushed your teeth. And it could be that uh, Theo, my friend Theo, inspires me because of what he does. Not because of what he does because he has a disability, but because of what he does. That carries with it a message of, I didn't expect you to be able to do that. I didn't expect you to be able to lead any part of your life independently. Uh, and I think that's where it turns from inspiration, which is legitimate, to inspirational porn, which is the celebration of everyday life. It seems to me that the more we use inspiration based on disability, the more our assumptions about what people can't do increase. You just do what you do because you're a person who has to live their life. Uh, it doesn't make you incredible or inspirational. It just means that you're a person working to live a quality of life that you want to live. And they have hope, they can give hope to other people who are struggling, but they're not seen in, in the mental health community as inspirational. You're impressed because somebody in a wheelchair is doing things that you in your mind think they shouldn't be able to do. It's easier to kind of get over that awkwardness of you're in a wheelchair and I don't really know how to talk to you about that, so I'm just gonna say, wow, you're inspiring. I appreciate all you do. I think it's great that you do this. I think it's great that you run this program. But people come up to me in the grocery store when I'm out to dinner or when I'm babysitting my nieces and I take them to the movies. Oh, it's so wonderful to see you out. You're such an inspiration. If seeing someone live an everyday typical life inspires you, you either need to do something with that inspiration or you need to look at changing your own life so that you don't gather your inspiration from, from people you see as less than who are able to accomplish the same things as you. Go inspire yourself. So let's fight the stigma against people with disabilities. Everyone has a role. Make the choice today to implement a few simple changes, and together, we can make a difference. I think, I think it is true that most people want to do the right thing, and that's why I think it's so important for us to create opportunities for people to do the right thing. So I, I think one of the things that we can all do is be an advocate. We can all be an advocate for people with disabilities. If you allow stigma, to influence how you approach, how you relate, and deal with people with disability on a day-to-day -day basis, you're going to miss out. You're going to miss out on some valuable relationships. You're going to miss out on some valuable friendships. You're going to miss out on some valuable uh, knowledge. Because the first thing, they don't see me as a person, they don't see me as a father, they don't see me as a teacher, professor, they don't see me as a coach, they don't see none of that. They see the chair.
Because most of the time you, you, you just walk right past me. Until you get an opportunity to know my story. Uh, and you can only know my story if you take a moment, a moment to listen to me. And then all of those myths and, myth and misconceptions and stereotypes begin to fall away and you start really seeing me as a person. You're, you're thinking, hey, what can I do? Well, how can you make anything that you're already doing more accessible? How can you think about something that you already do in a different way that might make it accessible to somebody new? How can you broaden your audience? Uh, and uh, raise questions about accessibility. When you know that, that um, people who have a certain kind of disability aren't going to have uh, access. And let's talk to some people who have that disability so we can get to know them and see what's really going on in their lives. Sit in a diner and you get to know people. They have hearts, they have souls. Uh, they just want what we all want. But it, it never will be changed unless you get over your fears uh, and, and approach people with all types of disabilities. And if you never walked up to a person with a disability and, 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 and shook their hand, then do that. If you don't know what to say, say what you say to anyone else without a disability. How about that? Uh, your, your belief about people based on real experiences and not just myths and misconceptions, but real experiences. And you can't have real experiences without interaction. I make a conscious effort uh, when I am interacting with someone with a disability to ask myself, how would I behave uh, if this person didn't have this apparent di disability? Social contact is one of the most effective ways of reducing stigma. And I find that for the most part, if you're respectful and kind and own up to your ignorance, folks are pretty nice to you. Instead of walking away, walk towards somebody with a disability and sit down or whatever and have a conversation and find out more about them than what you assume and how they look or how they act or how they're behaving and really find out who they are as a person. And then you'll see how quickly the disability isn't at the forefront anymore and you find out who they are as a human being. We just need to get into a mindset as to how do we how do we value input? How do we value um, friendship? How do we value relatedness with everyone? Be open-minded. Ask questions rather than assuming. Many people with disabilities will not be offended if you ask. Sometimes being really upfront about what's in your heart. It goes heart to heart instead of head to head. And I think it, it works a lot better. First and foremost, become aware of your profound and overwhelming privilege. And then become aware of how you, you can extend your privilege to others by raising awareness, by ensuring that your friends with disabilities aren't stigmatized. You can be someone who is a non-proliferator of stigma and thereby be somebody who is dismantling stigma. When you see a meme online, you can be a proliferator of stigma by sharing that, that meme, or um, you could be someone who, who at least tries to muffle it by not sharing it, or you could be somebody who actively works against stigma by perhaps sending your well-intentioned friend a nice note saying, hey, I know you meant for that to be motivational and you meant well, um, but hey, consider this other perspective that I've learned. Well, my guess is that your friend will appreciate your consideration, um, and likely that person won't share things that are responsible for the dehumanization of, of millions of people. We need to educate people all the way through the school system about this um, so that they can't jump to those conclusions that are built up in the newspapers. I think that when we are willing to get out of our, our boxes and look at and try things differently, we actually can make difference in, in, in these issues. And the community benefits from everyone. The more inclusive we are, uh, the more creativity, the more intelligence we bring to our society as a whole. In the long term, we always make progress. In the long term, things always get better. You will learn from people with mental illness a whole range of creativity and intellect. You'll learn from people with autism, whole new ways of doing things and seeing the world and responding to the world and it will open up your world. 
then that's the bonus round benefit for the whole society is to have a more open, diverse culture, uh, not just around disability. It's not just about us and them. It, the world really can become a place of we. And wouldn't that be a phenomenal thing to leave for our kids? <laughs>